this video like encompasses about four weeks worth of work because I had a couple of weeks off. I had COVID. It wasn't fun. And um, then life took over a little bit. I had some catching up on things to do. But I'm back on these now. Um, hopefully this will just be a continuation of the same video and it'll make complete sense and it'll only be me that has the kind of disjointed feeling. We shall see. In this video series I'm taking my Phoenix body shape and modifying and kind of working through jigs and templates to make it easier to do kind of consistent quality and you know, the key features through small batch production. In the last video we got the bodies to a nice comfortable point. So everything's kind of roughed in, there's, obviously I've not done the neck pockets yet, but we should be fairly close to being able to add that onto the template soon. Um, we've got the bevel all the way around, including the arm bevel, we've got the round over on the back, including the tummy carve, or the gut cut, we've got control cavity, and the lip for the rabbit. It's a rabbit. That's the technical term for the cutter that does it. It's a rabbiting bit. Completely pointless information. But I like the fact that it's called a rabbit. With an E, not an I. But we've got that in there. We've got the pickup cavity cut and the recesses for the control knobs. So that's done on all three of those. Which now means I need to move on to the next. I've got here three neck blanks that I made up earlier. I've got the mahogany and maple and the two Paduke and Wenge. True to form, I've spent quite a while with veneers and I've got, in these ones I believe there's a millimetre and a half plain maple veneer and then a 0.6 millimetre roasted maple veneer. And in this one, there's a 0.6mm mahogany veneer and another 1.5 maple veneer. This should help keep everything stable. And other than that, they just look cool. So in preparation for getting the next started, I've made a taper template. Which is for a 43mm nut. And the spacing of the strings is all marked on here from where we'd sit on a 43mm nut all the way up to where the strings comfortably want to sit on a 52.5mm spaced bridge because that's the spacing that we're using on this bridge on these guitars and with the 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length everything works out that I keep a nice even spacing with the strings down the fretboard with this taper. So what I'm going to do now is use this template and transfer it from one neck to the next. I'm going to use the router table to just get the taper cut into these as well as I've the rounded off heel end at this end here which then means that I'll have a neck blank that's the right shape to start with and I can start working from there. Often on one-offs when I'm at this point I will do the truss rod route when I'm here but for these I want to get everything nice and even because then I can make a quicker and easier kind of indexing system for my truss rod jig because at the moment I have to sit and faff about getting it onto the centre line which takes quite a lot of time if I can get something figured out that just kind of indexes on the taper of the neck, that would make my life easier. So that's why I'm doing it this way. 
so really, I need to go set my router table and use the gigantic, terrifying Radian three flute cutter that sticks up a mile out of the table to the router table. camera I made a new jig. Now obviously you saw me make this one and route the taper of the necks so all of the neck blanks are now the same size and shape which means that I can actually cut the profile on the back of the neck. So I've made this which this taper fits snugly into here and then when the neck blank sits above these lines, obviously, all you need to do is put the neck blank into this jig, like so. Then all you need to do is draw along this line here, which gives you the dimensions that you need to cut to. Take it off to the bandsaw and then trim as close to the line as you're comfortable with, a bit like that, and then attach this back in here, take it off to the router table, and trim it to shape. Now I'm going to use the four flute double bearing radian cutter of doom for this. It's not quite long enough to fully cut up here so what I'll have to do is clean up the edges with a chisel because the bearings will run outside either side, either edge of the neck blank but there's about a millimetre gap between the bearing and the blade so it'll leave a tiny little bit of material on the sides here to remove once we get to about this point just because of the taper but it will trim up nicely and then once I've cleaned that up that's my face that I'm going to be sanding flat anyway it'll do all of this absolutely fine and because it's got the double bearings and the way that I've made this jig is I've cut the taper into these template sides so the whole thing is perfectly parallel which holds the neck perfectly level along its center line it means that I get all my transitions perfectly perpendicular Yes, not parallel, perpendicular to the sides of the neck or the centre line, whichever one's like the right way around. I started out really well, kind of petered off a bit there. But it'll all be nice and straight and level and angles will be good. All I need to do is get some masking tape and super glue, attach this into the jig, and then take it over to the router table. Now, I did record me telling you all of this once before but it turns out that the memory card in my camera was full and I didn't notice that I only had three seconds of recording time to go so I sat down and it turned itself off. Um, so the mahogany neck is already done and it comes out a bit like that but I'm going to do the two Paduk and Wenge necks now and then we'll have three necks at this point which I believe the next job that I need to do 
after this is either route for the truss rod or attach headstock wings. So I'm going to have a look and a think about what order I need to do things in and what templates and jigs I'm going to be needing for the next job and then we'll get on to that. But first it's router time. So I modified my truss rod jig a little bit and I've already routed the truss rod slots into these necks. I use the same concept that I've always used, I've got a collar in my small laminate trimmer um, which follows a groove in a template that just kind of attaches on top of these. Because I've already got the taper and everything set Rather than sticking the template to the top of each of these necks, I made another kind of little cradle which I can just pop the neck into and then I can stick it in my bench vise which clamps everything nice and tight. And in that I've cut a channel that the collar fits in and runs along. So that stops at both ends and it fits perfectly for a I think it was a 460mm truss rod. So all three of these have now got slots cut which match up with the truss rods. I still need to open up the end here for the nut of the truss rod but I will do that a little bit later. What I want to do is get ready to put the ears on for the headstocks because I'm going to be doing this bit by hand anyway so it doesn't need to fit into uh, these cradle jigs anymore. So really what I want is a nice matching piece of wood. Conveniently I cut a big chunk out of here on all three of these necks which means after a little bit of time at the bandsaw and the thicknesser I've got three lovely little wedges. So what I need to do with these is measure, trim them down, figure out whereabouts I need them grain wise so I can get the end grain orientation kind of matched up nicely. And then I might need to get some more veneers because I'll probably end up planing away some of these veneers to get them to match up properly. And then they will stick on the sides of here. Which will be nice. So what I'm going to do first is probably... I keep saying probably. I'm definitely going to do this. I'm going to mark up the middle of these and I'm going to run them through the band saw so that the taper of this centre laminate is slightly thinner than my centre laminate here. And then I will take them... I will plane it flat, make them match. These are all taken down to 14mm thick, which is going to be my final headstock thickness. But I will also have a 2mm veneer on here, so these will go down to 12mm eventually. Which means I've got enough leeway to kind of put them on here and them not 
cause me any issues with being too thin and slipping. Hopefully. That's the plan at least. So what I want to do is mark up the middle of these, trim them up on the bandsaw, and get them ready to glue on. Now what I don't have is a jig for gluing three of these together, so I may have to do them one at a time. Or I could just make another jig, which long term I am going to have to do, but for now it might just be easier not to. We'll see. Let's do some cutting. I remembered that I didn't film was that it was going to be a lot easier to attach this if I angled the face of the headstock as well. I haven't completely angled and planed and thicknessed it, I've just cut it roughly parallel with the back face. I've also modified the gluing jig that I've currently got. I am going to have to make another one to, uh, to do multiples but this is adjustable so what I can do is clamp it up, get it glued up, leave it for an hour, an hour and a half which is the recommended clamping time for a tight bond and then I can take it out and move on to the next one. As long as you don't put any real tension on it, it likes to uh, kill for 24 hours properly but I can get on with that now so I think that's what I'm going to do. When I remember where I put my tie bond. These are all glued up now. I've also planed these faces flush and to the correct angle so I've got the very edge of my angled surface is just behind the nut line so what I tend to do is I'll put the veneer up to about a millimetre behind where the front of the nut's going to sit and then I can file it away to get a perfectly flat surface. I've also left underneath the camera a little stack of veneers that I made. There we go. So I like to do the faceplate veneer the same as the body or at least the top to make it match. So I've got two Swamp Ash bodies and one mahogany body. 
and a couple of spares because things go wrong sometimes. But before I stick these on, because that is really the next task, I want to trim off a load of the excess on here so I'm not unnecessarily cutting things and wasting time later on. So the other day I came in and I had half an hour spare so I grabbed a piece of 9mm MDF and I made myself a little headstock template which I can just kind of lay on and draw around. So obviously I've marked in my centre line here which means I can line up on each of the bodies. This face lines up with the nut and it's it's not a 100% kind of accurate template for routing around. I will make one of those later on. This one's just for me to can draw my temp, my headstock in place. So on all of these, I have actually drawn around it, which means I need to just nip over to the bandsaw and take away all of this excess, get it as nice and close to the line as I can. So I'm gonna do some camera magic, and all of these are gonna all of a sudden become the right shape. There we go. Now, I should probably sand these a little bit, but I may as well do that when I've got the head plates on because I'm going to be taking those down to the same shape and size. What I do want to do is get rid of any of the veneers that are overhanging up here a little bit just because it makes it a little bit tidier. So I can do that with a chisel. And when you can do something with a chisel, it's usually better to do it with a chisel because it's fun. The way I've got the grain on these, I may need to orient them ever so slightly off at an angle just to make sure I get everything covered. This area down here is recessed away back to the wood underneath, so I don't need to worry about the first plate landing on this, which is why I don't mind that these are a bit small. The mahogany will fit quite comfortably over everything there, so I'm not going to tamper with that. But I'm going to get these marked up and I'll just trim an angled face on here and I think I'll get them uh, glued and clamped and just get everything in place. And then that's done. Marvellous. Now the other thing I could have done, which would have probably been more intelligent, would have been to use this template here and actually mark out all of these because then I could draw around it and cut these out on the bandsaw and then I can get them all lined up on there which to be brutally honest is a better way of doing it and is the way I'm going to do it now. Yeah. 